Let's take you to the home auction markets around the country over the weekend. And again, clearance rates are lower with much more stock hitting the markets in the traditional spring selling season. Nationally, 2,217 auctions. The clearance rate just a tick over 56%. In Sydney, there were 789 auctions. But do note here the clearance rate has now slipped below 50%. So in other words, one in two homes are not selling in the Sydney market. In Melbourne, 945 auctions. But the Clearance rate there is much stronger. Two thirds of those properties you can see were sold. In Brisbane, 87 auctions. The clearance rate there, just over 47%. In Adelaide, 76 auctions. It's still the strongest market in the country with just over 71% of those sold. And in Canberra, 66 auctions. 54.5% cleared, which is the Australian average. So let's bring in here Cameron Kusher, the Director of Economic Research at REA Group, who joins me now. Cam, um, thanks for your time. I just want to go to this point. Spring selling season, a lot of properties hit the market, but then you start to see that lurch in the, uh, in the clearance rate. It makes you then wonder if a whole bunch more housing is built, the government gets its way, what does that actually long-term do to the prices? It's a, it's a really good question, Ross. Uh, as you said, we are seeing a lot of properties coming to the market at the moment. Um, you know, we reported earlier this month that September was the strongest September for new listings since 2015. We're still seeing a lot of properties coming to the market and that is softening auction clearance rates. It's giving people looking to buy much more choice and it's taking that uh, urgency out of the market. In terms of building a lot more housing, well, we're running a very high rate of uh, overseas migration into the country. So we do need to be building more housing. But of course, as you said, you know, a lot of people look at residential property um, as, a, as an asset and as an asset that typically appreciates in value over time. And if we do build a lot more housing, then that does have the potential to dampen capital growth prospects going forward for people. So maybe we need a re-engineering of the market and a rethink about how we treat housing. Um, but also I think it's, it's going to mean that maybe when we're particularly pushing for a lot more higher density housing, there will be pushback on that um, because we know that uh, people do like to see the value of their asset increasing. And we know that typically units don't rise in price anywhere near the pace that houses do. Yeah, you can already see that pushback in Victoria where the, the Premier there is suggesting that there be you know, significant high-density uh, housing built in some of its, uh, you know, shall I say, more expensive suburbs and there's community backlash to that. Just one other aspect of it is also the, 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 the financial feel-good that comes from rising home prices, which generally tends to lead to increasing in consumer sales. And when you've got a very flat economy as Australia has got right now, that's going to be factored in uh, in terms of where the economic future lies? It, it, it certainly does. Um, you know, I started in the, in the property sector sort of 20, 25 years ago and real estate agents would tell you property prices double every seven years and at that time they did. Then it became sort of seven to 10 years. Now it's more like 15 years. And, you know, there is a wealth effect from higher property prices that people feel like they've got a lot of money. They look at the equity they've got in their home and they're more prepared to go and spend money. Whether that's actually a good thing or not, I guess that's, uh, that's probably up for debate, but that's where we are, you know. More than half of people's household wealth is tied up into residential property. And for one reason or another, people look at residential housing, they look at buying it and holding it, and, uh, and that increases your wealth over time. And the interesting aspect of this is since COVID, you've had big increases in capital city home prices in a very short space of time. So to your point, you've almost had half of the growth that you would normally see over, say, a 12-year period. Exactly. I mean, in some markets over the last five years, property prices have almost doubled. I think in, in WA, prices are up about 85%. In, uh, in Queensland, particularly southeast Queensland and in South Australia, property prices are up 75%. But then you've had places like Victoria and Tasmania where price growth has, has really lagged behind quite substantially. Uh, I guess the, the general trend we're seeing though now is there is more stock on the market. Uh, interest rates are holding at those higher levels for longer than people were expecting. And we're starting to see that rate of price growth um, either slow in most areas or for the last year, we've been seeing prices fall in places like Melbourne and Hobart.
It's really fascinating because the problem of Australia with the increased migration rates was whether we had the housing stock and also whether we had the infrastructure. But there is a case in the future where the argument for more migration is going to be there simply because there will be sufficient housing stock. Whether infrastructure is kept up, that's another matter altogether. I think that's the crux of the problem at the moment, uh, that, you know, we have had this huge surge in population increase over the last couple of years once the borders reopened, and we've seen per capita GDP falling for six consecutive quarters. So whilst there's some good arguments for um, migration, people are seeing the fact that migration's keeping the overall uh, economic uh, growth figure in positive territory but people aren't really feeling the benefits of that at the moment. And I think for governments, that's going to be a real challenge going forward because obviously we've got an ageing population um, and we're not having another, enough children locally to replace that population. We need the, the tax base. But uh, I think more and more people are going to be pushing back against migration because um, they're not really seeing, at least at the moment, the benefits of having this huge amount of, of population growth. They're seeing, you know, house prices are getting more expensive. It's getting harder to find a rental. And the infrastructure investment just hasn't been there to cater that, to that population increase. Oh, too. Cam Kusher, always good to have you in the program and many thanks for your time today.